Okay. Looking at our Google Classroom. So we're gonna prepare this for next year. So one of the biggest tips that I can give you is always create a new class. Do not reuse the same classes year after year. The reason for this is because it will populate new folders so you can find your student work easier. So with that being said, I have two options. I can create new or I can make a copy. So if we look at my class here, my sixth grade math class, you can see I have all my classwork. So I have it broken down how I want in all my different weeks. Maybe I have my bell work topic and some of my different assignments. So if I go back to my dashboard, instead of starting from scratch, I can make a copy of this. So if I click on copy, so it's gonna allow me to make a copy. I can rename this. So I suggest putting the year in it somewhere so you can see. Maybe you need to change that. Also be aware um, when you are naming some of your classes, if you have um, maybe four math classes, you might not want to say math period one, math period two, because some of the programs that Google Classroom syncs with, it will cut off the ending because it only shows a few of the characters at the beginning. And some also do not show the section. So in this case, maybe I want to put, um, you know, 21, 22, sixth grade math, or, you know, period one, sixth grade math, um, just so that that differentiation is at the beginning versus at the end. So if one of the applications that you sync with cuts it off, you can see that at the beginning. Okay, so you can have any of that. Also notice that it will copy any of your topics, and it will also copy any of your classwork. Okay. The other thing that it will um, not do, sorry, it will not do is copy your roster. So it's going to wipe out all your students and it will not bring over any announcements. So those are the, the comments that you make on the stream. It will also not bring over any of the settings. So if you say students um, cannot um, comment and post, you'll have to change that setting for the classroom individually. So I'm going to click on copy. It's going to generate my copy. It'll take a few seconds because it's going to get all those assignments and, and topics brought over. So while it's doing that, um, one of the things that it does is when it creates a copy, it automatically creates another folder in your drive. So if you want to find students assignments via Google Drive, you can do it that way. And then all the old assignments from students won't be in there because it creates that fresh folder. So it's now created. If I go into my classroom, okay, you'll see my stream is nice and clean. And my classwork is there, but do you notice how it's all grayed out? That means all of my assignments that come over have come over as draft, which means that students can't see these yet. So even though I have week two, three, four, and five, students aren't going to see anything because everything's in draft mode. So again, you get your assignments over there, but when you're ready to release them, then you would have to click on the um, uh snowman menu or the three dots, click on edit, and then you can add your due date and so forth there. And then once you publish it, then the students will be able to see it. So again, a copy brings everything over, but it brings it over in draft. Okay. Let's look back here. Okay, so that's one thing. So don't just start archiving all your classes and stuff. Think about how you want um, to use it for next year. So another thing that we're going to look at um, before we start talking about archiving is looking to see what we still have to do. Um, student work needs to be returned, make sure everything is graded and so forth. So one place that you can look to see what needs to be done is this to review. So this is for the teacher's point of view. The to-do is for a student's point of view. And you can see I am a student of some classes. So any of the work that's in those classes is gonna be listed in my to-do. And yes, students do have that in order to see what is up and coming. But for you as the teacher, the to review allows you to see at a glance 
it will show you all classes by default. It will show you any assignments that do not have due dates. Okay, so you can see I make most of mine without due dates. Um, and then it also shows work in progress. And these are any that do have due dates. Okay, so it's kind of broken down into those areas. But what you want to look for is you are looking through here and you want to make sure you have your assignments that you have zero that are turned in, zero that are assigned, and everything is graded, which means that those assignments have been returned back to the student. So you can see here some of these. This is just assigned. Now, um, if you're, does anybody work with the really little students and, and the students don't turn things in? If you do, you can just give me a thumbs up in the, the uh, with the reactions. Okay, so sometimes some of my, with the littles, you don't have the students turned in. So then you want to look at it here to make sure that all the students have it and go in there. Um, but what you're looking for for your other kids are those students that have turned it in. You don't want any numbers here at the end of the year. You wanna make sure you get all of those assignments returned to the students. Here's why. Soon as a student turns this in, and I'm going to kind of show you the background of this before I actually grade it. So if I click on this and I'm looking at my assignment, this has been turned in by Demo 10. Once a student turns this in, and I'm sorry, I'm go clicking fast because I know where I'm going. I'm going to click on my Drive folder. So this opens it up in Drive. So once I click on that, it's going to go directly to that assignment folder so I can see this assignment. A lot of people don't go here, which is fine. You don't have to, but here is the difference. When I come here and look at my assignments, because demo number 10 turned in his assignment, look who the owner is. It is owned by me. So he changed the ownership when he clicked on that turn in button, which also gives you the opportunity to be able to grade it without that student making changes because it takes away their ability to edit. It only allows them to view. However, if I clicked on this and I'm like, eh, I'm done with this class, they graduated or they moved to the high school or moved to the middle school, I'm just gonna delete all these assignments. Well, because this one is owned by me, it also is deleted from that student. So if they're, they created a student portfolio, maybe they created a resume, maybe it was even a short story or something that they want, you just deleted it from that student. Now, in Wesley's case here, he has not turned it in. So he is still the owner of it. So he owns the document. So if I delete this, if I delete this, it's only deleting my access to see his document. But since Wesley is the owner of it, he still can have access to it. So how did I get to this drive screen? The easiest way is when you're in an assignment. So I'm in my country assignment, every assignment. So you can click on it from classwork. You can click on it here. And then when you view your assignments, or you can click on each of these numbers. I don't know if you know that those are live links, so I can see who's turned it in. I actually got there from my to, to review screen. So when I click on that, it takes me to all my assignments. And I saw that I have one that was turned in. So if I click on this, it's a live link into the assignment, into the document that was turned in. Then in order to get into my drive folder, I clicked on the little folder here. And that opens up drive and allows you to be able to see it. Now, do you have to come into the drive folder to see all the documents? Absolutely not. This just shows you the ownership. So that's all I wanted you to see here is who the owner is. I can still get to my students' documents by clicking on the document here but it doesn't show you who the owner is. The only way that I know, and you guys will know after today too, is that if anything is under the category assigned, that student is the owner of the document. 
any documents that are under the category turned in, that means you, the teacher, is the owner of that document. So now let's go through the process of making sure that we turn this information back over to the student. Because like I said, sometimes kids do reuse things or they like to see what they've done in the past. Um, or maybe they they created something like, for example, a country um, report and the next year they have to do on it. So maybe they want to build on it and add more to it. So you don't ever want to just get rid of their information, turn it back to them and they can decide what they want to do with it. So um, we're going to look here at the shared with me also, because that's where it becomes a problem. Um, when you're returning things, it automatically populates shared with me in here, um, which means that this kind of blows up when you're grading papers and returning them back to the students. And that's okay. This screen doesn't have to be organized at all. There's no way to create folders. You can either sort it by date or by name, and that's your only choice. But I just want you to see that that assignment is not here. Um, Okay, so kind of, yes, Michelle, that's a good question. So if you're working with the littles and you don't have them turn things in, your assigned area might have a number in it and that's completely fine. You just wanna make sure the turned in is a zero. That's the biggest one because when it's at the turned in stage, you are the owner of it. Assigned, the student is the owner, and graded, the student is the owner. And we'll go, get to graded here in one second. So yes, yeah, so if you're working with littles, you might have a number here, and that's completely fine. So let's look at turning this in. So we looked at the shared with me. We saw that was blank. We looked here in the assignment folder. I am the owner of that. So we, we want to change this around. So I'm going to go through and grade these. So some of you, if you're working with littles, you might not grade from here and that's okay. It could be an ungraded assignment. Okay. So I can, um, I can change the point values or I can type something in. It, it's completely up to you. Okay. So you can return it without points but you want to get this assignment returned to the student. So if there's 20 kids in your class, you can put a check mark next to where it says turned in and it'll check all 20. If you wanna do one student at a time, you can just put a check mark next to their name or click on the three dots to return. But maybe this, in this case, I'm like, you know what? I do wanna give this student a grade. I'm, I'm gonna give them a grade of 95%, okay? And you'll notice the check mark is there and I am going to click on return. So it's saying, hey, you're returning this work to just one student. So if you had five students checked or 10 students checked, it's gonna tell you the return work is going to five or 10 students. Be aware that if you're bulk returning assignments, any private comment that you put here goes to all of those students. So you don't wanna say, Good job, Johnny, because that's going to everybody else. Okay, so just be aware of that. So I'm going to return this. And then you can now see that it has been categorized under graded. So let's look here. And I'm going to do a quick screen refresh. And then you can see it changed from the owner being me, the teacher, back to the student's hand. So now if I delete this, demo still has access to it. I just don't. I just removed my access to it. The problem is when it's returned, it will also populate a copy in your shared with me. And that's okay. You can see it populated here. It is always gonna be in this folder unless you remove it from here. But if it's in shared with me and you're like, I can't stand all these assignments in there, or maybe you returned 20 assignments, you can click on these and you can hit delete to remove it. But then if I go back into my country folder, you can see his work is still here. 
And I'm just doing quick refreshes um, so you guys can see. It, it usually refreshes on its own within a few seconds, but since we're kind of, I'm trying to speed things up a little bit, I'm, I'm just hitting the refresh button, but typically you don't have to do that. It's going to do it on its own. Okay. So now if I go back to this assignment, let me go back into my country. You can see zero are turned in. So anything under assigned, anything under graded are in the hands of the students. So whatever I do in my drive folder, it's not gonna affect any of the students' work. Um, no, you don't have to have the zero, you know, especially if you're working with your early elementary kids, are they gonna use it? Probably not. Um, did they create a slideshow that has a picture of themselves? They might want to see it the next year. So you might want to make sure they have it. Um, it's just a way to make sure that they have their documents. Um, does this have to be done? Absolutely not. But think of your middle school, high school, where they are reusing assignments or they're doing research projects year after year. And they want to like see, um, well, how did I set that up last year? They might go back into an assignment and, and see. Um, so it's just easier to return it. So you're giving them access. Okay. So since we have that, so we got everything returned. Um, we got things graded. We noticed it populated and shared with me. And again, like I said, you can clean up shared with me. It does, it's not going to delete it from them. It's not going to delete it from you. It just removes it from the shared with me folder. You can see here, I don't come here that often. Very rarely do I come to shared with me. If I'm looking for something, I either search for it up here or I find it in my recent. Or I actually think it's easier from classroom to go into your drive folder from here. Okay, so this takes you into the main folder where when you click on an assignment, oops, sorry about that. Um, this takes you into the individual assignment. So that's the difference between those two. Okay, so speaking of that, let's go back in to our drive folder. Okay, so several ways that you can get this. So if I click on drive, the class drive folder here, this is gonna take me into this specific class. So classroom new features. If I wanna go into all of my classes, because maybe I'm cleaning up that folder for next year, then I can get to it from my drive, okay? So as soon as you create one Google Classroom, it will automatically populate a folder called Classroom. Never delete this folder. There is a way to get it back now. There didn't used to be. But this outside folder, and notice I put mine in red, so I notice I, it stands out so I can see it. But if you delete this folder when you create new classrooms and assignments, it all fills up in your drive here. So it doesn't all get organized here in classroom, okay? So this is kind of the, think of this as the filing cabinet for all your Google Classrooms. So you can see I have multiple sessions. I have, you know, here's my sixth grade math classes that I created. So everything is in here. So you can delete anything that you want from within this folder. So for example, I'm like, oops, I created this class in air. So I can click on it and I can hit remove. It's gonna move it to trash for 30 days. But maybe I wanna keep things. So maybe I'm gonna keep things for the first nine weeks for next year. Maybe I wanna keep a few things. Maybe I have a good class that was very techy. And I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna keep some of their stuff so I can use it for examples. So within my classroom folder, I can always make new folders. So I can create new and click on folder. Maybe I want to save all of my 20, oops, 21, my 2021 um, student work. So I'm going to click on create. 
So you can see it creates that folder for me. So now anything that you have that is old, I can just start clicking and dragging into this folder. And it's going to say everyone that has access to it can see it. I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to click on this one or you can do multiples. So if you have six periods, you can select all six. And I just did that by, um, so if you just click and, well, you should be able to click and drag. I just did it there. So you can click and select multiples. If I click and hold, now I can move it. And it's, you can see that it's moving two of my folders into my 2021. So it's just a way to clean up without deleting. Now, for example, you're done. You're like, I don't want any of the students work. I don't care about it. I'm done with this year. You just click on it and then remove it and it's gone. And again, as long as it's not turned in status, the student still has access to the documents. So, you know, again, as long as you've returned it or it's still in that assigned category, then the student still owns it. So if they want to make changes to it or use it again next year, uh, they can do that as well. Okay. Any questions with organizing your drive? Okay. So any of these folders in here, they are automatically created when you create your Google Classroom. So whatever you name your Google Classroom, it's automatically going to become part of the folder name. So it does it for you. And then inside of here, um, any, any assignments that the teacher makes are going to be here. So you can see I haven't done anything in this class. But if I look at... Um, Where's my new features? So here's my new features class. You can see all of these assignments are listed. And then inside of here, so here's my country, mm -hmm. that's where my student work is listed. Gotcha. So I'm doing multiple clicks. I'm opening up classroom, I'm opening up the class, and then I'm opening up the assignment. Whereas if I'm in the assignment from here and click on that little folder, it automatically does it for me. Okay. Did you have to create the original classroom folder? Nope. It does it for you. So we would find that right now in our drive? You should, yes. Hopefully you see it. And if not, we can look and see maybe it got put in your trash. But that just, that just is your organizational unit. So everything flows in there because you can see how, I mean, you don't want all of these separate folders in your drive. You want them all organized in the class, in the classroom. Also, one other thing to be aware of when you're working um, and you're cleaning up your classroom folder, and you can see I added do not delete, so I know not to delete that. But again, I can delete things in here. When you are creating new classes for the next year and archiving things, and again, we'll talk about archiving, items in my drive do not automatically disappear. So think of it as a one-way street. Classroom gets to talk to drive. It goes one way, but, you know, drive doesn't go back to classroom and say, okay, well, I, I, I see this one's gone, so I'm going to remove it too. It doesn't work that way. So as soon as something is created in classroom, it automatically populates it in drive and it'll stay there until you physically either organize it in a folder or you completely remove it. So when items are created in classroom, it doesn't automatically clean up and drive. So we want to get our stuff cleaned up and drive so we can determine what we want to do with our Google Classrooms. So whether we're going to make copies of them, whether we're going to archive them, whether we're going to delete them, whatever. But whatever we do in classroom is not going to fix this. This is, you can see mine goes back multiple years 
because I don't always come in here. Plus I leave things in here so I can make folders and show you guys, but it, it's important to get this cleaned up sometimes just so you don't have, you know, especially as we're using classroom more and more, it's going to fill up more. And you're like, oh, I taught this class three years ago. I don't need it. Remove the entire folder. Just get rid of it. So then that gets rid of the folder. It gets rid of this, your access to the student's work. Okay, there is one more area that we have to clean up um, before we start looking at archiving and what we're gonna do with our, our, our assignments in classroom. So again, I'm in my Google Classroom. Um, every time that you create a Google Classroom, it automatically creates a Google Calendar. So because of this, at the end of the year, you want to make sure that these calendars are cleaned up. Shelly, you're not sharing your screen. Oops, sorry. That's all right. I remembered to hit record, but I forgot to share my screen. <laughs> There, are you seeing my classroom? So every classroom creates a Google Calendar. So this causes a problem in your calendars. I know some of you guys are not complete Google districts, but some of you are going that route. Um, some of you use Google more than others and so forth. But your, your Google Calendar can get very um, overwhelming because everything's going to be on there. Now, one thing to note is that once it creates the Google Calendar, it will only display any assignments that have due dates. So for example, I posted these instructions or sorry, the introductions, it was posted, but it doesn't have a due date. So this is not going to show up on the Google Calendar. However, my country project, because it has a due date, will be on the Google Calendar. So let's go look at it. And I know mine are, are older, but we'll still get back to them. So once I click on my calendar, it takes me into my Google Calendar and you can see all of the different classrooms. Okay, and you can see the one that I made today that I named 2122. You can see it's already there and it's already visible. So we're going to start getting rid of some of these here in a minute, but let's look back at that new features class and look at that. Oops. And look at um, it was August. So you can see right here, or September, sorry, September 18th, my assignment is due. And it's kind of grayed out because that's showing that it's a previous date. Um, but if it's something that's due in the future, it would be colored and very visible. So if I just uncheck it, that's great. You're like, oh, it's gone. I don't need that anymore. Perfect. Wonderful. Yeah, but it, now it's still in your list. So now you're going through all these. You're like, oh, that's a class from two years ago. Oh, that's class from one year ago, we can get rid of some of these. So there's two different things that you can do when you're working with these calendars. So one, I can click on the X, which means I unsubscribe from it. So it basically just takes away your access. So kind of the same process as removing a document in your drive. So um, you, you would have to request access for it again. The other thing that I can do is just hide it from my list. Okay, so th those are two different ways that you can remove it from seeing it. Now, the difference between unsubscribing and hiding is unsubscribing, you would have to request access again. Hiding it, you have the ability to show and hide it. Okay, now hiding it from the list is different than just putting a check in the box. So that's just showing what's visible on your screen versus what's visible in my calendar list. Okay, so we're gonna look at a couple calendars here. First, I'm just gonna hide my 20, 21, 22, sixth grade math. I'm gonna hide it. So it's gonna be hidden from my list. Okay, I know we have, I'm, I'm gonna unsubscribe from all of these. 
Sorry, I did that for multiple classes. Okay, so my other option, so my other option is to, um, which one did I just do? I just unsubscribed, correct? So then with this one, teaching with technology, I'm just going to hide it from my list. So if I click on hide from list, it removes it. But now let's go back in and see where I can show it again. So um, I can come up to my, my gear and go to my settings. I can actually right click on any of these and go to settings as well. But this just takes you to the overview. So if I look, these are all my general settings, but now it says settings for my calendars. Any of them that I unsubscribed from will not be listed. Any of them that I said hide from list, teaching with technology is here. So if I click on the eyeball, it's going to now put it back. So now I can see teaching with technology back in my list. So that's the difference. So unsubscribe, it actually removes your access and then hiding it just makes it so it's not vis visual so I can bring it back if I need to. Okay. So again, you can see all these classes. If I made a class and I made a mistake, the calendar is still listed there. It's still gonna be there until you physically come in here and unsubscribe from it. Okay, so I'll give you guys a second to look at your Google Calendar and see how many you have in there and decide if you just wanna hide it or if you wanna unsubscribe. So again, if you're done with the class, you don't need to go back to any of those due dates, I would just unsubscribe, keep that list clean. Okay, now let's look at the big chunk of what we wanna do with our classroom archiving. So we've got things cleaned up. We've cleaned up our drive. We've cleaned up calendar. Now it's time to clean up our actual classroom. Okay, so our dashboard is what we wanna clean up. So you can see I have a lot of things in here. One, you can organize things um, if, you, if you want, but a lot of times if you're done teaching the class, you wanna remove it so you can't see it. So, couple things before you before you decide to archive it what you should do okay first is when you're looking at this go to your people tab so we're going to look at this we're going to look at our people tab you want to make sure your students are removed and i know a couple of you are elementary so this is very important because this removes it from the student screen so if you're just leaving it up anytime you remove a student it takes it off of their dashboard as well For my upper elementary and upper grades, um, it's important to remove the students because you don't want them getting back into the archived class. Yes, it will, once you archive it, it will remove it from their dashboard. However, they can still go into archive and get back to any of your old assignments. So say there's siblings and, One's in eighth grade and one's in sixth grade. And the eighth grade goes, oh, I remember that assignment. They can get back into it and still get to that assignment. Okay, so just be aware of that. Even if it is an archive, students can get in and access the assignments. So just remove them. So you just put a check to check them all and say remove. And that removes their complete access. Now, I'm ready to archive this class. So students are removed. I can see there's no students listed. So I want to click on the three little dots and I wanna say archive. Notice there's no option to delete. So I'm gonna click on archive. It's gonna say, are you sure? They can't be modified, okay? The teacher does have to restore it but you can still access anything that's in there through the archive. Notice it says for all participants. So that's why I suggest removing those students. So now I'm gonna archive it. It's gonna remove it from my active dashboard. 
put it into my archive folder. And my list is long, but archived is down at the bottom. So here is my teaching with technology class. Okay. So if there is a class that you're like, okay, I made a mistake. For example, this one, I want to get rid of it. I'm going to click on the three little dots. Now I have the ability to delete. Okay. Be careful with deleting. So just be aware that once you delete, those assignments are gone. You would have to recreate them. So for example, I have technology in the classroom here. So let's look at my class. I want to create something. I'm going to create a new assignment. So I want to use something from last year's class. I'm like, oh, that was, you know what? We did that project. It was really good. Maybe I'll make a few tweaks to it, but I want to bring that in. So I can, um, no, that's not what I wanted to do. Totally sorry. Forget everything that I just did. I want to reuse my post. Sorry about that. So I want to cre uh, create and say reuse post. So I have that project that I was working on. I'm like, okay, where was that? So what class was it in? So I'm going to click on my back arrow. It was in my technology in the classroom. Notice it says that it's archived. That's okay. It still allows me to get into that archived folder. Okay. Notice, and because I'm going to do something later, notice my sixth grade math 2021 is still in there. So if I click on that, here are all my assignments, okay? So I'm gonna go into my technology and I want to reuse this assignment. So I'm gonna click on it and say reuse. It's gonna bring that in. I can make tweaks to it. If I need to add anything to it, I can. I can, you know, re um, topic it so I can put it in a new topic. Um, if I don't like this one, it will automatically create a topic if it is not already being used. So be aware of that. So if you changed your topic structure from last year to this year, you might have to erase it and um, use one of the topics that you already have. Okay, so then I can pick one of the ones that I, I use this year. Okay, if, if it is an assignment, which this is not, this is just... Um, information. So you would have due date, you can change the point value, all that stuff. So again, just because it's sitting there in archive, it still allows me to use that. Now, here's the difference. Okay, so we're going to go to oh, no, back into our archive, my math 2021. Okay, and you can see I have classwork in here. Here are all my assignments. Okay, I'm like, you know, I, I just, I'm not teaching that class anymore. I want to get rid of it. And, and maybe I moved to seventh grade math. So I'm like, why do I need sixth grade math? So I'm just going to go back into my archive folder and I'm going to say delete. I'm going to get rid of it. You can't undo this action. Okay, so it deletes it from here, deletes all the assignments, does not delete it from my classroom folder, okay, that we talked about. Okay, so here it is. So I still have access to all the kids' work, which nothing was turned in. But now here's the problem. Now I move back from seventh grade to sixth grade math, and I'm like, oh, I can, I can reuse assignments from my old sixth grade math class. When I go to reuse post, notice my math 2021 is no longer in the list because I deleted it. So archived, you can keep them in there as long as you want, they're gonna stick around. So if you're changing classroom or you're changing grade levels, maybe you're changing subject areas, just keep them in archive because if you ever need to get back to them, you can. The other option is you can pick and choose what assignments you want and put them in an assignment bank. So for example, 
Um, maybe you had a, a great assignment. You're like, oh, you know what? I had that Pear Deck assignment. I want to keep it for next year. But everything else I don't really need. I can get rid of everything. Maybe you structured it because maybe you were teaching remote versus teaching in person, but next year you're back to in person. So you're like, a lot of the stuff I don't need, but there was a couple good projects. So I have what is called an assignment bank, okay? It's just a classroom that there's no teachers in it, just me. So um, you can see there's no students. I'm the only teacher in here. But what it allows me to do is bring in work from other classes so I can save it year after year and reuse it when I need without having to save the entire class. So I would just say create, reuse post, and you can pick your classroom. So I wanted it from the new features class and it was the Pear Deck assignment. And notice it tells me that it was in draft and that's fine. You can pull anything from draft or maybe it was the my country. So now I can click on reuse and it's gonna bring that in. I can make any modifications that I need. Maybe I wanna put some notes. Maybe I wanna put update the rubric. Okay. Whatever. And then I can hit assign. I don't have to hit assign. I can leave it in draft if I want to. That's fine. But it's now in my assignment bank. So here it is. So it's going to stay there. So anytime I want to reuse this, the next year in two years, it's going to be here in my assignment bank. But everything else in that in that classroom, I didn't need, so I can just delete it or archive, well, archive it, then delete it, okay? Does that make sense, the difference? So archiving keeps everything. If you make an assignment bank, you can pick and choose what assignments you want. Yes, so Michelle, yes. So if all four of your assignments are the same, I would archive one and then delete the rest of them because you don't, you don't need five of the same thing sitting in archive. You need one of them, but all of them have the same assignments in them. So as long as that assignment is in the one you archive, that's all that matters. So in future years, like I don't have any, um assignment bank classroom right now. So if I create one of those right now, then like, let's say next year, I'm creating an assignment, would I create it in my assignment bank classroom so that it's in there and then just reuse it to my three math classes? That's a good question. So I'm going to give you a couple different scenarios because, you know, I've been doing this for a couple of years now and people bring things to my attention. Um, so Typically, I would say, well, you know, you would go into the classroom. So say it's period one and you have something in the assignment bank. You go to period one, you go into your classwork and you would say reuse post. Some people say, well, I create my stuff in the assignment bank. So I go into my assignment bank class. I create from scratch here and leave it in draft because I can work ahead and it, it's not cluttering up my first period class. Because remember, you can create things ahead in first period, but they sit there in draft. So I can create it here in my assignment bank. It can sit in a draft here as long as it wants. Then when I'm ready to use it, I would switch back to my first period class and then I would reuse it from the assignment bank. Okay, then some people are like, well, I have this assignment. I'm going to reuse it next year. So now I'm going to put this assignment into my assignment bank. So they go backwards. So I'm in first period. Now I'm going to go to my assignment bank and pull it in there. So I have it for the future. Did that answer your question? Yes, thanks. Mm -hmm. And could you review, I, I'm sorry, I, I must have had a thought when you said that <laughs> my brain can't multitask. Um, 
how did you create the assignment bank? It's just, you just create a new class, but never invite students to it. And your, your brain's not foggy because I never did say that. So oh, okay. I, I just, I showed you cause mine was already created, but yes. So you would just create, just create a class and never add students to it. And just call it assignment bank. Yeah. And you can call it whatever you want. Saved assignments, um, you know, do not delete. You can call it whatever you want because you're the only person that's ever going to see this. Gotcha. Okay. Or, you know, I've had several um, grade level teams. They create an assignment bank for each other. So say there's five first grade teachers they create an assignment bank for the first grade team and they're all teachers of it. And then they can use the assignments from there in their personal classrooms. Mm -hmm. So, you know, or, you know, maybe I'm going to work on creating some science assignments and you're going to work on some math assignments. Well, then, you know, we're going to put them in the assignment bank. Well, when I'm ready to use it, you know, I go into my my kid science class and I pull in whatever you created or vice versa. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, so the question is, if at the end of the nine weeks, you want to clear out everything so it's fresh for the kids, what do you do? So there's a couple options um, that you can do. So one, you don't really want to archive your, that class because then for second nine weeks, you have to have the students join again. Right. So you, you don't really want to do that option. The second thing is you can delete your assignments, but if you want to use that again, first nine weeks next year, now you have just deleted all those assignments. So what I suggest is when you're on your um, dashboard, so um, let me just edit this so we can, you'll see. So this is going to be first nine weeks. And I'll talk about the class names too here in a second. So this is my first nine weeks class. Everything in there, um, I want to save for next year. But I want the kids to stay in the classroom. So what I would do is make a copy. Okay. And just, you know, even in your notes or, you know, somewhere here put, you know, first nine weeks assignments, because this is just going to be a copy for you. So you're going to create the copy real quick. Remember, it doesn't bring over any of the students. It only brings over the topics and the assignments. And mine is taking really long too. Okay. So then what I would do in here, now that the copy has been made, when you're in this classroom, then start deleting stuff out of it. So you don't have to delete your topics, but now you're like, okay, you know, I'm done with this assignment. I can delete. I can hit, unfortunately, yes, you have to delete every assignment one at a time. There's no getting around that. And if you try to delete the topic, it will just take these out and put them up here. Mm -hmm. um, but then, so you have that copy of first nine weeks, you have this cleaned up and you can start your second nine weeks and then repeat that process at the end of second nine weeks, make a copy. But then you don't want, you don't want that sitting in your dashboard. So oops, when you see all your classes, you don't want this copy sitting there. So you can archive this so you have it for next year and it moves it out of the way. Okay, so also with, you saw that I renamed this and I shouldn't have showed you that because because what happens is when you rename it here and, oh wait, they might have changed this. Oh, cause I had deleted that originally. Um, but yes, you can see here, it, it maintains the folder name. 
the old name of the classroom. So even though it gives you the ability to here, let's do let's do Mrs. Baltic's classroom. This one's an easy one. So you can see here, if I go to my drive, it's called Mrs. Baltic's classroom. Okay. Close that. And I'm going to come here and I want to edit this. And I'm I'm going to click on edit. I'm going to change the name to first period alt and hit save. So now when I go into my folder, but I think it might change it now. Nope, see how it still calls it Mrs. Baltic's classroom. So when I'm looking in my drive, if you use your drive, that's the only thing. So it would still be called um, I don't even see it. It's probably in one of my past classes. It would still be called Mrs. Baltic's classroom. And I'm sure I threw it in one of my grouped folders. Sorry, that was a bad example, but it does not change the name of it. So just be aware it doesn't change the name here, um, but it does change the name on your Google Classroom screen. So if you are trying to find something in um, Drive, just be aware it maintains that old name. Okay, unless they've changed that recently. Um, but when I clicked on it, it didn't look like it changed it here. It looked like it was still calling it Mrs. Baltic's classroom. Oh, it's in my 1920. So here it is. So the only way I can get this to match what's in Google Classroom is I would have to click here and hit rename. So, and I will tell you an example. Um, this happened with one teacher um, because if you remember previously, Google Classroom did not allow you to rearrange where it does now. So when I always told the teachers, create your classrooms backwards so that they'll be in order on your screen first period to eighth period or whatever you might have. Um, well, I had a teacher that didn't do that. So instead, she just wound up going through and changing the names here by going to edit so that on her screen, they looked visually correct, but they were going to the wrong folder. So every time her first period class was going into the eighth period folder, because that's how she created them. So it was just a mess. And she always thought it was wrong, but it was because she wound up renaming. Um, as to how many topics you can create, I believe it is 100. Don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure. Um, because I know we did have some people that were running out. Um, let's see. Let me see if I can Google this real quick. I'm pretty sure it was 100. Um, 200, sorry, 200. So, and you guys do, it is it is now called Google Workspace. It is not Google for Education anymore. So it's Google Workspace for school. Um, so that is what you would follow is the 200. Um, have a great day. Um, hope you guys all learned something. Um, and if you ever have any questions, feel free to email me and have a great summer. Enjoy some time off.